to be showing you today what I would do, what I am doing. Um, smudge. For a leg day in my luteal phase. So my period's coming soon. Um, so this is a time to kind of be a little bit more cautious, but I don't need to avoid exercise altogether. Like I feel energized. Um, I'm just going to dial it back a little bit. I'm going to focus a little bit more on hypertrophy, uh, endurance training. I'm going to be doing higher reps for sure. Um, and probably ending with a little bit extra cardio. So a tiny bit less weights, but again, I'm not going to avoid these things. Okay. That's not necessary, but, um, I'm going to show what my routine is for a lower body day um, during the luteal phase, specifically week four. Um, last week I took it quite easy. My body wasn't having it. And I always feel a little bit guilty for that. Um, that I'm like losing progress, but ultimately like I, last week was just not it. You know, I still got in several workouts. I still got my body moving but it felt kind of shitty. Um, right now, I'm making a little shake um, just to get some protein in my system, some amino acids. Um, this is going to be kind of my breakfast slash pre-workout shake, and so instead I'm not going to make one after. Um, I'm just going to have like a breakfast of, I don't know, eggs or something after. Um, so right now I'm having the chocolate truffle. This one is my favorite. I think it's my new favorite. It's so hard to decide though, they're all so good. So I just put water in, in one scoop so far, and now I'm adding milk, which is kind of weird to mix the two, um, but that's just the way I like to do it. So I'm gonna shake this up quick, kind of sip it on the way there. Um, I'll probably finish it, but if not, sometimes I drink half, and then I, as soon as I'm done with my workout, I have the other half already ready to go to start sipping as soon as I'm done. Um, again, just to make sure that the amino acids are flowing. I have them in my system so that my muscle doesn't start to break down since this is kind of a time in my cycle where I'm extra prone to that muscle breakdown and to injuries and such. So, um, yeah, I'm going to drink this and I'm going to head out. First, I want to apologize. I am a little bit sick as I am recording this voiceover. But anyway, I want to go into first how important this warm up is. So, obviously, it's always important that you warm up before your workout. But for this week in particular, for me, it was extra important that I did a really good warm up. And so, these things I usually do pretty much the same warm up regardless. But I always start with TRX. Suspension, suspension straps, excuse me. I do squats with these, and then I'll usually do lunges as well. Next, I am using this mini band to do some lateral leg raises, and then I'll also do a kickback. And I like to do this to warm up my glutes and my hips. I've been adding this hip opener um, because this helps a lot for me to prevent knee pain especially during squatting um, and it also helps mobilize my ankles before I get into um, my compound lifts where I need to have um, really thoroughly warmed up joints and lastly for my warm-up I like to do good mornings and you'll see why in a second this is really great for warming up your hamstrings as well as your spinal erectors in your lower back so make sure that everything is warm and you're not going to strain yourself. I'm just doing um, some zombie squats right now. Um, I just switched out the barbell as well. Make sure to always check your barbell because um, some of them will have different textures, different grips on them, and sometimes you'll want more texture, sometimes you might want less. Um, and so on zombie squats, I didn't want like the textured barbell right on my neck, so I swapped it for a barbell that is a little bit lighter, but that's fine because zombie squats should be done a lot lighter anyway. No zombie squats look a little scary and they kind of are 
Like I said, you want to go way lighter on these. Try to get all the way down ass to grass and try to keep your chest up as much as possible. Take your time and the key here is going to be going lighter, lighter than you would like to so that you can really focus on your form and your breath and making sure that you are bracing your core so that you're not straining yourself. I know it doesn't really look like I'm very happy here, but I promise this is my favorite way to do hip thrusts now. I don't really care for the hip thrust machines. I mean, they're okay. If that's all that's available, great. Like, I'm still gonna use that. But Smith machine hip thrusts are where it's at. These burn my glutes so good, and I never wanna go back to any other hip thrust variation now. Now this is a more challenging movement. You could also do this with a dumbbell or you could do double leg too if you're still working on this hip hinge motion. But I do like to challenge myself with a little bit of stability um, and a single leg movement by doing this on the cables. So give it a try if you're feeling already pretty comfortable with your hip hinge. Finally, I'm finishing up with some hip adductors as well as some calf raises and I'm supersetting those two things to finish up for this workout. Really important, so don't ever skip that. 